Yes, uh, Marty. Huh? Grandpa Rick, how come you had to re-upload this video? Shut up, jeez, man. Oh, God. Uh, Shh. Didn't you make no, a mistake? No, just stop talking. Oh. Uh, uh, but, All right, then. But... Uh, let me just fiddle with this button here. Uh, Energy. I mean, what can I say? It's a really important topic. If you don't know this, you ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be going through the equations in the red boxes, uh, but there's really no getting around it. You'll have to memorize all the equations. Nice. Let's get some definitions out of the way. So, energy defined. Energy is the ability to do work, and work is force multiplied by distance moved by the object. Okay, so that's the work that would be stored in that object, or the work that would need to be done on that object. Okay, and then the second uh, important definition is the conservation of energy principle. Uh, energy is always conserved. The total amount of energy present stays the same before and after any changes. So um, another way of saying this might be uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change form. Let's start with the most basic definition. Work is equal to force times distance. Force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in meters. So you might think that the units of work would be written as newton meters, but uh, you'd be wrong, although that would be a good guess. Uh, it's actually joules. This is so that you don't get mixed up with newton meters for torque. Uh, so joules, or um, uh, J for uh, joules, is the unit. Okay, so thinking about conservation of energy, um, energy transfers are things we'll be looking a lot of, a lot at a lot of. Uh, so imagine GPE being converted into KE. What does this mean? It's gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. So if you have an object up high and you let go of it, um, it will convert whatever GPE it had into kinetic energy. And if there's any friction, then um, you'll get some conversion there as well. But it won't all. Uh, you won't have any losses. So if you had 100 joules of GP at the start and you had 90 joules of kinetic energy, then you know 10 joules was lost to friction, maybe heating up the air. So to understand GP, we need to remember the equation weight equals mass times gravity. So on Earth, weight is big, and on the Moon, weight is small. Mass remains the same everywhere, but um, it's your weight that changes, and the formula W equals mg allows us to calculate it. In fact, W equals mg, weight equals mass times gravity, is very similar to the formula F equals ma. In fact, they're practically identical because they're both um, calculating the force in newtons um, if you know the acceleration, and in one case it's acceleration due to gravity. So, okay, let's get back to GPE. So from the definition, work equals force times distance, the force required to raise an object will be equal to its weight. So the force would be mass times gravity, and the height through which you raise it is the distance through which you've moved that object, so that is the height. So MGH is exactly the same as force times distance. Now, what about the formula for kinetic energy? Well, if you push an object and accelerate it, speeding it up, you are doing work on it. You are applying a force through a distance. That distance could be calculated by looking at the, disc, the velocity time graph of that object and calculating the area under the graph. The area under the graph, being velocity times time divided by 2, would give you the distance travelled. The force to accelerate the object, though, could be um, calculated by knowing the second law, f equals ma, and the acceleration, again, would be the gradient of the graph, which would be V over T. So uh, if we put all these um, terms together, you've got mass times velocity over time times velocity times time over 2. Time is on top and bottom of the equation, so we can cancel it. We've got two Vs multiplying each other, so you end up with a half mv squared. So again, going from force times distance to mgh to half mv squared, they actually are all just the same equation, force times distance, just uh, picked apart a little bit. Now, another really important concept to get your head around is power. Work is work, okay, but power is how fast you do the work. So that's energy divided by time. The unit of energy is joules, the unit of time is seconds, so we could say that the unit of um, power is joules per second, and this is uh, completely acceptable to write your answers as joules per second, but you shouldn't be uh, thrown off by the fact that um, power is usually written down as watts, okay? So to give you a kind of idea, 744-ish uh, watts is one horsepower, a similar unit of power. Okay, now let's look at some springs. So if you stretch a spring, you are doing work on that spring, and the spring will store some elastic strain energy. Now, a spring that obeys Hooke's law, 
the force will be proportional to the extension. So you can see a force extension graph here. But again, looking at the formula work equals force times distance, the, this time the extension is the distance and the force has changed throughout. So we have to consider the fact that the force has varied. So we take the average force, which in the end works out the same as calculating the area under the graph. So force times extension, but it's half force times extension because we're getting the area of that triangle, which is going to be equal to uh, elastic energy. So one formula for elastic strain energy would be a half force times extension. But since um, Hooke's law is also um, force equals spring constant times extension, we can sub in, well, I'm just rearranging it here, k equals f over e, which is the gradient of that graph as well. We can sub into um, the equation for elastic strain energy the uh, formula for force, which is ke. So we get a half ke times e which again simplifies down to a half ke squared. Looks very similar to um, the uh, equation for kinetic energy and actually some similar properties. So for instance if you double the extension you are not doubling the energy stored in a spring and if you double something's velocity you're not doubling the energy um, required to get its velocity up to that point. So important point to remember. Okay so here we're looking at um, the apparatus that was used to uh, to kind of get get our heads around um, thermal energy. So gravitational potential energy is something we understand reasonably well. It's mass times gravity times height and an experiment was performed whereby a um, body of water was sort of stirred with this big stirring paddle and um, what was found was that if you have uh, say a 10 kilogram block and it falls to a certain height you get a certain temperature rise. Right? If you double the mass you double the temperature rise. If you double the height, you double the temperature rise. Um, it was also found that if you put half the amount of water in the in the barrel, um, for the same amount of GPE, you'd get twice the temperature rise. So, um, and different materials also would give you um, different temperature rises because different things have different capacities for storing heat energy. So if you want to know more details about this topic you need to look at specific heat capacity but the basic formula is that the energy required to raise a block of material depends on its mass in kilograms, its specific heat capacity here given by the symbol C which the unit is the joules per kilogram degree Celsius and um, it also depends on the temperature rise you want to achieve, the change in temperature you want to achieve. Here I've put temperature in degrees Celsius, but degrees Kelvin would also be perfectly acceptable. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Please comment, like, subscribe, and share.